which is there have been a number of reports recently about these sort of near collisions that are taking place uh, with planes. I mean, God forbid that they ever happen, but they're scary when you read them sure. about these moments that where, where there are these super close calls, super close calls. And it's almost by the grace of God go I kind of thing. It, it, it appears if you're reading these things. Well, let's be clear. It's not the grace of God. It is a multi-layered aviation system that even if one piece fails, another one catches it. The, the aviation safety record in the United States is fabulous. I mean, and yet, think and, about and, it. And yet these reports seem to be worse today than they were five or 10 years ago. You tell me that that's wrong. I don't know. And then the question is, if, it, if that is the case, what you need to be doing about that as it relates to training, as it relates to having more FAA employees, yeah. et cetera, and technology. Yes, AI. I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned technology. And actually, AI, AI is part approval. of the picture of how you manage the future of, of the airspace because some of these things are computationally complex. So any given, given year, there are a number of what are called runaway incursions, and addressing those is the top priority of our new FAA administrator, Mike Whitaker, who just got confirmed. Now, uh, these happen every year, but the only acceptable number ought to be zero. And that's especially true now that we've driven the number of fatal uh, crashes involving airliners to zero most years, which again is incredible. If you just think about it, uh, 40,000 people a day, uh, sorry, 40,000 people a year are killed on our roadways. And we kind of just treat it like it's normal. That's like a 737 every single day. Uh, we, we shouldn't accept that on roadways. We don't accept it with air travel. We've got the safest, most complex air system in the world, and we're working to keep it that way, which is even not just a, a collision, but even something right. that could have theoretically led to a collision, even if planes were a thousand feet away, we're going to investigate and we're gonna uh, step up the, the steps to deal with it. Now, you mentioned technology, and I would be remiss if I did not mention that the House Republican mark, its operations currently in terms of cars on the road, right? They're still doing some training and, and the like. And it goes to your, to, to your issue about 40,000 deaths in America, yeah. in, in cars. What do you think is a politically palatable number of deaths by autonomous vehicle in America? The reason I ask is yeah. that to me is fundamentally gonna become the ultimate question. If I told you you could get that number from 40,000 to 5,000, right. would that, that would be great in the macro, yeah. but if I told you that all 5,000 were being killed by a computer effectively, would you, as a human and a citizen, accept that? Yeah. And well, I don't know the answer. It's I'm so curious point. how you think about that. Uh, I, this, this worries me a lot, too, because our, our, our psychology is, is such that sometimes something that by the numbers is safer doesn't feel that way because it involves less control. The scenario you're describing, 80% reduction in roadway deaths, is a safe, it's a safety triumph, and yet, I'm not sure that the American public would accept that level. And that's one of the reasons why we're being extremely rigorous as a, as a regulator in the way that, that NITS, our National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, is approaching automation. It's not because we don't like it. It's because we know that, that both in terms of safety and in terms of the psychology of safety, it has to be squeaky, squeaky clean. Look, but we you read about every death where a person wasn't in control and in graphic detail. Yep. And then those manufacturers would be liable. Right. To, so that's a whole other question that the policy boss. world hasn't caught up with. Remember, the division of labor that we have in this country is that we, the federal government, regulate the car, and the state, the BMV, regulates the driver. Our system does not contemplate things like liability if the car is the driver, and that's part of what we need to work on in, in the policy. How does state. insurance right. catch up with that? There's a million. Yeah, but, but, but the other end of the, the, the pot of gold, so to speak, at the end of this, this journey is that we could have a radically safer country because, frankly, the track record of human drivers is murderous. Right. Uh, Secretary Buttigieg, thank you. <laughs> it actually goes to self-driving cars and vision and everything else. Um, and I asked this question of Pete Buttigieg, uh, Transportation Secretary. It's actually something you retweeted, so I wanted to ask you the same question. Um, there's a big question about autonomous vehicles and the safety of them, but there's also a question about when it will be politically palatable in this country for people to die in cars that are controlled by computers, which is say we have 35, 40,000 deaths every year in this, in this country. Yeah. If you could bring that number down to 10,000, 5,000, that might be a great thing. But do we think that the country will accept the idea that 5,000 people, that your family 
uh, might have, have, have perished in, a, in a, a vehicle as a result, not of a human making a mistake, but of a computer. Um, yes, yeah, so, well, first of all, humans are terrible drivers. Um, so people text and drive, they drink and drive, they get into arguments, they, you know, um, you know, they do all sorts of things in cars that they should not do. Um, so it's actually remarkable that there are not more deaths than there are. Um, what we'll find with computer driving is, I think, probably an order of magnitude reduction in deaths. Um, I think, and, now, and the U.S. has actually far fewer deaths per capita than the rest of the world. If you go worldwide, I think there's something close to a million deaths per year due to uh, automotive uh, accidents. Um, so I think computer driving will probably drop that by 90% or more. It won't, it won't be perfect, but it'll be 10 times better. And do you think that the public will, will accept that? Do you think the government will accept that? Well, at, at, in, in large numbers, the, it, it will simply be so obviously true um, that it, it, it really cannot be denied. And what do you um, think? I know we've talked about the timeline before, and I know people have criticized you uh, for putting out timelines that may not uh, have come true just yet. But what do you think it really yeah, I mean, is? And, I mean, and by the way, do you feel like, do you ever say to yourself, oh, I shouldn't have said that? Sure, of course. Um, wait, I should have said that. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm optimistic about, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think I'm like naturally optimistic about time scales. If I was not naturally optimistic, I wouldn't be doing the things that I'm doing. Um, I, I mean, I suddenly wouldn't have started a rock company or a, like a car company if I would, didn't have some sort of pathological optimism, frankly. Um, so, um, as you pointed out, many people said it would fail, and in fact, I said, I, actually, I agreed with them. I said, yes, it probably will fail. And they're like, hmm, okay. Um, but I, I thought SpaceX and Tesla had less than a 10% chance of success when we started them. Um, so, yeah, anyway, but, but, but the self-driving thing is, is, I've been optimistic about it. We certainly um, made a lot of progress, if anybody has tried the very, it has been using the sort of full self-driving beta. The progress is, uh, you know, every year has been substantial. Um, it's really now the point where, in most places, it'll take you from one place to another with no interventions. Um, and the data is unequivocal that uh, that supervised full self-driving is somewhere around four times safer, or maybe more, than than just a human driving by by themselves. Um, so I'm, 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 I, you know, I, I can certainly see it coming. We're, we're, we're actually, really, but do you think it's another five or ten years, and then people? No, say, no, no, definitely not. Uh, definitely not. Um, and do you feel like investors have invested in something that, that hasn't happened yet? Is, is that is that fair to them? And that's the other question that people have about that. I, well, I mean, I think the, 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 they've all, with rare, rare exception. Uh, thought it wasn't happening, so they were investing in, despite thinking they're very clear that they don't think it's real. So they're not saying, "Oh, we, we just believe everything Elon says, hook, line, and sinker." Uh, uh, but and the thing is that I mean, I would be a fair criticism of me to say that I am late, but it isn't. But I always deliver in the end.